the you know the cost of helping you rebuild. Like I, you know, I'm not one of these guys who make all these wild promises that we can't come through, but I can assure you that this is big. And people are thinking big. We're gonna think outside the box to help rebuild from this storm. You've shown tremendous character here on the front lines of dealing with this storm. You show courage. People risk their lives to save their fellow man. You know, it, uh, it's, it's easy for me to say that I can see a better tomorrow. Because I haven't been living what you've been living through. But I do. That's what you got to know. That out of the darkness will come some light. Out of this despair is going to come a vibrant coast. I just want you to know that when I'm thinking about how we can help this part of the world, Mississippi is on my mind. Well, when Katrina hit, I was um, I was in my in my house in Bay St. Louis. Well, I could say the expected and the unexpected happened. Um, the expected was the high winds, and the house I was staying in was built to to, to last through it. But around around ten around ten o'clock, uh, I saw water come in the house, and we thought it was a we thought that um that our above, that, that our above ground pool just like damaged and flooded out, but as it turned out, the storm surge um, made the water go through our house. Um, we had about four feet of water into the house. When we saw the water come in, the first thing I did was grab towels and, and try to um, try to uh, try try to like dry up the, just just dry up the floors, but. It was, we were just wasting our time doing that. But later we then realized that this water is getting bigger so we better get up that we better get up to the attic. So my family and I had to stay in the attic for about five, ten minutes tops. But um, my dad, we got back down, uh, my dad was keeping an eye on a, uh, on a spot on the car that was parked in the garage where the water was, um, where the water was rising. And when he saw the water go back down, we, so did we. We, we headed back down. Now, it's about four feet down, everything was soaked and the water wasn't quite clean. Well, actually, um, let's see, the water gave us enough time to, um, to, to, to put up, to, like, to, to like, put our valuables on top of the, uh, on, on, uh, on some uh, high shelves and desks and whatnot. Okay. But we were fortunate that we had time to do all that. Well, my first thought after coming down to the attic was, um, thank God we're alive. That was, that was about it. Well, from the time, from, well, I guess from the surge, from the time the surge came in, we waited about three or four hours when okay. after, uh, for the storm to subside. We spent, see, we spent the night, of the, see, we spent the night after, uh, back in our house, there was still some mattresses and stuff, sleepable. Um, well, the next day when I walked outside, and the sky was completely clear and it was kind of warm. We, um, we kind of went ahead and started um, taking some stuff out, cleaning, cleaning some stuff up. I feel like I'm going, I feel somewhat changed that, um, after the storm, that um, taught, um, the storm taught me how to be strong in the times like these. I was in my home with probably about 20 other relatives. They all came to stay with us because my father built a home that was built to withstand a hurricane. He was a contractor before he passed away. And so people always came to our house for the hurricane. So we all stayed there. We all got ready and stayed at my house, probably about a mile and a half away from the beach. Well, it started with the, um, the copper roof and the second story of the house. It began to roll off, and so the whole upstairs started to leak and flood. And um, we all were freaking out about that, putting bowls everywhere. But what we didn't know is that the water was going to come up. And as soon as the eye, I guess, was passing over, we looked outside because the winds weren't as strong. 
and we saw the water and it was getting close and we were like, was the water there just before? And then all of a sudden it came in. We started putting towels down thinking it was going to come in and started pushing everything like underneath the house and it gushed up to about five foot. We were just in shock trying to pick things up, throw the kids upstairs and when it got to about four and a half foot. We just were rushing in shock, just trying to pick up whatever we could, but it all ended up getting ruined. I don't know. It's kind of up in the air as to what we're going to do. If we're going to sell or try to rebuild. It's just a lot of damage. And it was actually crazy because right when we had gone outside, I mean, every single, we had probably about 30, 40 pine trees in my backyard. Every single one of them were snapped. And we had about three huge ones that had snapped. So the, everything was, it looked like a bomb went off, kind of. Like the sky was crazy color. And we went outside and the water was still kind of everywhere. And power lines were down everywhere. So we were scared to walk. But um, I had actually saw someone that I knew walking from the highway saying that he just got off the roof with his parents and he was walking to see if his house was okay because they stayed at his parents shop so it's kind of crazy that I saw someone that I knew and he said he looked petrified that like he said that he held on to the roof and they were holding on until the storm was over and after the storm it was crazy because um, my sister is a manager at the super Walmart and she had ran into the, um, the policemen and the firefighters they hung on to a tree there were 12 policemen hanging on to a tree and she, she got into Walmart and they got in there before anyone and was able to get socks out and things for the, for the policemen because everyone, it was, it was weird, there was no help. For the first four or five days everyone was just walking around helping each other before any aid actually was able to come get in there and help. Well I'm right off of Highway 90, Highway 90 and then my road comes off of it and then for a mile and a half like there's a railroad track and then over there are tracks is the beach. I know, so it's it's weird. I don't know if our water came from over the railroad tracks or if it came from all the rivers that pushed through. That's what we really don't know was where the water actually came in. We knew that it came in through the back door coming this way and then out the front door. My father always said it will not it won't come over the railroad tracks. It it never came over in Camille. The water never ever came over the railroad tracks. So we thought we were safe and then we found out when I went to I wrote, I walked down I saw my friend's uh, mom, and she lives right, here's the road tracks in her house, is right there, past it, and her whole back wall was pushed in. So they think it came over, I mean, the whole railroad tracks where theirs was totally broken to where her the whole back side of her house was wiped out. So we definitely know that it did come over the railroad tracks, but I mean, that's what flooded most of the streets. I think that we were, got some of our water from the beach, but most of it from all the rivers that pushed through. And so we went riding down, and it was, Oh, the first place we went was to the Bay Bridge, and it was not there at all. And it was just, I mean, it was unexplainable feelings. Like, we were scared, but there was no way to get in contact with anyone. No phones worked at all. So we finally, someone was walking around with a satellite phone, and we were able to get in touch with one relative, because, you know, they all thought we were dead. And just to see everything of my childhood, every place, every memory, it's just not there. You go to the beach, all the beautiful homes, beautiful homes are just, they're like this high, this high. There's nothing left. We were back about a week and uh, we were staying in Ocean Springs with a cousin of mine that all of our whole family had came over to help with picking up everything, cleaning. And uh, we stayed there, and then the first time we went to the beach was right after we got back, actually. I think the day after we got back, we went down to the beach, because my grandpa lives down there. He lived on the beach in Waveland. So we had to, we went down there, check all that out, and everything was gone. It's still good to get away from school every once in a while. You go visit home and see my mom and everything, so. Well, it really, it, when stuff like this happens, it really makes you like try not to take certain things for granted that you did before when you had it you know so it's it's kind of it makes you think a little bit more about what you're doing with your life and everything